Alright everybody, welcome back to the Outer Worlds DLC, Peril on Gorga. And, that's right, we had a ton of stuff to read. Requires code. I don't know the code. Um, not this. Got stuff up there, stuff down here. Let's see. Let's examine. Note about a key. Several whiskeys in and a few bits short last night gave Lex the maintenance room key while I scrounge up what's owed owed note to self pay up and get it back before you go back to OCI Lex the maintenance room key okay Lucky's case notes day one Spacer's Choice may have left in a hurry but they didn't forget to lock the doors on their way out most of the facilities are sealed up tighter than a top Runger's safe. Time to do some digging. Day 6. Caught a break today. Met a scavenger who claims to be a salesman for Spacer's Choice. Sold me a key to the Office of Creative Incubation. Let's just say this guy's about as lucid as a sprat at, in a Rizzo's factory. But I'm spending Minnie's bits so I can afford to take a chance. Day 7. It worked. Clarence mostly, whoever you are. I'm drinking to you tonight. Day 10. Olivia Ambrose's office and journal ought to be in the Synthesis and Manufacturing Center. The bad news is it's sealed up and as the, at the ass end of the canyon. The good news is I should be able to open it from the Big Wigs admin terminal in OCI. Day 13. OCI is crawling with martyrs and I've got a few other leads to chase down. Could be nothing, but my gut tells me that tells me there's more to this place than a missing journal. Time to turn over a few rocks and see what crawls out. I'm leaving the OCI key in the safe. The combo is 4815. Hell yeah. Preserved eye. A carefully preserved eyeball, mostly intact. Right. Can't they stick the preservative in before or after the eye comes out? If I'm not mistaken, and I can't believe I'm about to say this. That eye might be the key Lucky mentioned. What strangeness have we involved ourselves in here? Well said, Vicar. Well said. Now, we have all of these things up here. Left to right, I guess. List of expenses. Room and board at the Sprat Shack, 350 bits. Boris Wurst, 25 bits. OCI key, 100 bits. Ammunition, 50. Stogie Slims 200, Glacial Age with Whiskey 500. Right, hold on. Priorities are straight in there. Theories and Leads. Something strange in mines. Check it out. Note, stay out of mines. Murderous Moon Man in the Canyon. Probably local legend. Canids equals yellow Spacer's Choice logos equals yellow coincidence. No such thing. So that's, um... What was his name? The Something the Accountant. Accountant. Chuck? Larry? I don't know. Um, persons of interest. Lots of bodies buried on Gorgon, but not many hatches. Everyone had a grudge to bear and a finger to point. Lawrence Goodfellow oversaw Office and cre of Creative Incubation, genuinely oblivious or playing dumb. Olivia Ambrose, Project Director, Lead Scientist, Prickly Perfectionist, Note, do not ask many about her. Killed in excavation. Evacuation. Lucian Bancroft, Spacer's Choice Man, Real Top Runger, Few Logged Visits to Gorgon, Tensions with Ambrose, Marion Black Slee, Supervisor of Human Inquiry and Auditing, Nerves of Steel, Heart of Ice, Disappeared When Things Fell Apart, Jasper Lowe, Head of Chem Lab, Exhibited Increasingly Erratic Behavior in Later Years of Project, Herbert St. Germain, He's a Ghost, Worked at one of the facilities, vanished suddenly. <clears throat> Records scrubbed. In a little spot. So I think we came from here, right? Someone's in here. Oh well, it's coming back up again. I'm all right. I'm all right. That last one really emptied my guts. No, wait. Here comes more. Oh. Oh. 
Oh wow, I'm over encumbered now. Huh. What in the hell did I pick up? How about all these damn weapons? I don't remember when I got them. Let's see, we're gonna keep this. Definitely. I don't think we need a flamethrower. Definitely not a shotgun. 634. What do theirs do? 584. 437. Yeah, you can have that one. Buddy. Whoops. Damn. 703. That revolver. Kind of want to keep it. the hell? It's so touchy, the triggers. Oh, I got a bunch of this stuff, too. Okay. Nobody saw nothing. Oh, okay. So that's, I believe that's it for this building. Let's go ahead. Let's talk to Lex. Sorry about Freddy and Trixie. When they're not fighting over salvage, they're fighting over the bed sheets at night. My my. Those two are a couple? They like to blow off steam during work hours, but as soon as they clock out, they turn into a pair of kittens. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. First one's on the house, and I won't even water it down. What'll it be? Uh... Whiskey. I'm feeling refined. Bottoms up. I assume you're here for salvage. Actually, I came for a journal. Well, not exactly, but can you explain what you mean? Most of my regulars are sublight scavengers. They pick over the ruins of Gorgon, spend their earnings at the bar, and uh, head back out the next day. Vicious cycle, but that's life. You're the first new face I've seen in a while. Let's see... What do you know about Gorgon? Spacer's Choice used to brew pharmaceuticals in these parts. That's why the asteroid smells like an old gym sock. They say Adrena Time came from here. Just down the road at the old R&D lab. Very hush-hush back in the day. Oh wow, okay. Would any of your regulars have more information about Gorgon? Roscoe might tell you more. We talked to him already. He spent already. some time around here before the bar opened up. I trust him well enough. There's always Leonora, my favorite customer over her in the storage well. room on the second floor. Keeps to herself and always closes out her tab. What's Roscoe's story? He's been here since opening day. I think he told me he was some kind of journalist. He got left behind when Spacer's Choice pulled out. And I guess no one's coming to get him. Poor bastard. You looking out for him? Roscoe's drinks are on the house. We all know how it feels to get left behind. He'll be alright. He's with the family now. And we take care of our own. I really should have talked to her first. <laughs> Why do you get left behind? He didn't tell me and I didn't ask. I'm his bartender, not his human resources rep. If you believe the chatter, a lot of good folks got left behind, and a lot of bad folks made it out. Sometimes, that's all there is to it. What can you tell me about Lenora? Nice lady. Been coming around a lot these past few months. She isn't with Sublight, but seems to know the lay of the land better than anyone. 
She spends most of her days drinking alone. I think she's looking to hire someone. If you're open to a side gig. Do you know if she spoke with Lucky Montoya at all? She and her husband worked on Gorgon before it all fell apart. No kidding. Ugh, what a shame. I owe her one on the house. When Spacer's Choice pulled out, a lot of people found themselves adrift. The ones with nowhere to settle ended up here. Sad but true. Do you know if she spoke with Lucky Montoya at all? You know Lucky? Eh, small asteroid. Now that you mention it, I thought I saw those two sharing stories over a pint. Didn't think twice about it. I don't speak ill of the dead, but Leonora deserves better company. That Lucky was no good for her. So, you knew Lucky? Lucky? Sure, I knew him. He could get a little... dramatic at times, but he was a good guy. Heard he took on a dangerous job. Spent a lot of time coming and going from the Office of Creative Incubation, just down the road. Go on. The way he talked about the job, you just knew Lucky had hit pay dirt. Not that I was jealous. Around here, that sort of luck can be uh, hazardous to your health. Uh, awful shame about what happened to him. I know about the severed arm, but the rest is a mystery. We'll go with what happened. You really want to hear my story? <laughs> wow, most everyone around here is sick to death of it by now. Last I saw of Lucky was a few days ago. I went outside for a smoke and a stroll, and I saw this wild canid dragging a bloody limb. So I kicked the canid, scared it off. Go on. Get this. The canid was chewing on an honest-to-law human arm. Lucky's arm. Uh-huh. Anyway, the arm was clutching a phonograph that mentioned someone named Alex Hawthorne. I did some poking around, and this Hawthorne has a reputation among the uh, <clears throat> salvagers who frequent the bar. So I packaged up the arm nice and tidy and sent it care of the Halcyon Parcel Service. They even gave me a discount on the hazardous waste removal stamp. The arm made it to me I'm Hawthorne's next of kin, sort of. No kidding. And now you're here? Colony feels smaller than you'd think some days. I'm glad I was here to see this, uh, confluence of events, you know? The stars really aligned on this one. And here I am, smack dab in the middle. Thanks for the story, I asked another question. Why bother sending the arm at all? I figured Hawthorne would want to know what happened to his pal. Help Lucky get his affairs in order, you know. Oh, I hate to see people go with unfinished business. Thanks for the story, I had some other questions. Lay them on me, boss. I'm not going anywhere. Did Lucky leave a key with you? As a matter of fact, he did. Collateral for the bar tab he was racking up. So, I guess it's mine now. And, no, you can't. Ah, about that. Bribe, is the key worth 1,504 bits to you? Or we could intimidate... Can't. We don't have enough lie. It'd be a shame if I had to cause trouble at your place. Couldn't bribe. I don't want to be mean. She's really nice. Um, didn't we already get into the safe, though? No, that... Okay, so we'll bribe. I don't care about money. No. Oh. Uh. Maybe. I was going right, to say yes. no, and it, it took the bits, Here. what? I don't know what it unlocks, but Lucky seemed to think it was important. I take him at his word. So you run this place? Yes and no. The Sprat Shack used to be a shipping and receiving warehouse during the old Project Gorgon days. When Spacer's Choice pulled their guys off-world, Sublight moved in to uh, salvage what we could, and they put me in charge. Do Sublight... So Sublight owns the Sprat Shack now. Yes and no. Rumor has it there's a Sprat wandering around the Groundbreaker. And he's the legal owner of the Sprat Shack. Hagen's idea. Dare I ask why a Sprat owns this bar? See, Hagen didn't want a paper trail that led back to her, so she gave the bar to the Sprat. 
If there were any legal problems with this place, the Sprat would do the time. <laughs> Most businesses in Halcyon are run by Sprats, but this is the first I've heard of it being openly acknowledged. You think a Sprat could own Edgewater? Oh, oh, imagine when wearing Mr. Thompson's little hat! Anyway, that's what the paperwork says. I don't make the rules. All right. How would you even know which Sprat is the right one? Easy. His name's Matt. <laughs> the beautiful Matt thing the is, no one could tell Matt Sprat apart from an ordinary vermin. I think that's kind of the point, to send the authorities on a wild Sprat chase. This is so dumb. Uh... I guess I'll try not to step on it if I happen by Groundbreaker. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. The Sprat Shack's gone through a lot of title holders over the years. As far as business arrangements go, this one's a head scratcher, but they say it's all above board, so that's what matters. The space of choice mine that you're squatting in their warehouse? Yes and no. We're doing a lot more than squatting. We're classing up the joint, keeping the riffraff outside where it belongs. They didn't even serve drinks until I arrived. Talk about wasted potential. Can you answer any questions without starting with yes and no? Yes. <laughs> and no. Again, that one was Hagen's idea. She told me that speaking in vague terms keeps you out of trouble. And I don't want any trouble in my yeah, place. you know. Who does? How do you get supplies in and out? Thirsty people come and go from all over the colony. Mostly on the way to somewhere better. Some are well-connected. And not everyone pays with bits. That's how we get the unconventional goods anyhow. Sublight keeps us well stocked with the essentials, by which I mean booze. I'm gonna have a look around. Good. I've got paying well, customers. I said you wouldn't mind talking. So we have it. Oh god. No. Okay. Wait, this... Isn't this the utility closet? You know what? I'm getting as much of that money back as I can. Taking this all and selling it. I mean, nothing much in here if this is the thing. Let's see. Glacier age water. Yeah, there we go. There. And honestly, this Adreno. Then Adrena Time. I don't. He was 20% of health over two seconds. We don't need 140. We'll go half. Then the Adrena time, which we rarely use anyway. That brings us down to 89 pounds.
So... Is that eyeball in here, I wonder? Yes. Right. So maintenance room key. This is not the maintenance room key. Behind there. Who do you work for anyway? Okay, so it's not down here. Check back up here. Hello? Why'd you want to meet here anyway? God, there are a lot of sprats here. In the old days, I felt like I was. I have a feeling maybe we already opened it or something. And I wasted that much, that those bits. Or, it's not in here. Because I've explored every room. They can go in, so. It's either not in here or we already got it and I wasted the bits. Whatever. Another thing I wanted to do, because remember when we uh, spoke to Parvati and Vicar, they each had something to say um, about what we're doing. Or about Gorgon, anyway. Um, so I kind of want to go back to the ship really quick and see what the others have to say. All those little things you just heard, by the way, and maybe also hear in other videos, I'm popping on my knuckles. Hopefully, following in Lucky's footsteps doesn't result in us sharing his fate. You think this place we're headed will tell us more about Gorgon? I wonder what they got up to here. Um. Actually, oh yeah, we can shut off that alarm too. That's broken. Forty disable emergency evacuation notice. Good. Oh, she's just back over there. You don't think that's a problem? Whole ship's running on a computer's fancy. That'll make you nervous, Preacher? 
No, Felix. The concept of a ship computer does not make me nervous. Are you scared of Ada? I ain't scared of Ada. Good. I'm glad we cleared that up. It's just, she's a computer, Max. What happens when her equations tell her to cut off her oxygen? Or blast us all into space? Felix, Ada is not sentient. She can't act out of a sense of malice. Where do you get these ideas? I was watching true stories of mechanical murderers last night. Felix, I find your purity refreshing. That's hilarious. Hey, Cap. What's with the raptodon in your room? Oh, that's just Frida. She's the first rapt I ever killed. I had her preserved. Didn't realize we had extra dialogue with Naoko. How long ago was that? It had been when I was a kid, so something on the order of 20 years. My parents were very proud. You'd have that head for 20 years? Oh, sure. Once in a while, I've got a barrier and come back later. She's a big girl, tough to lug around. But she's been with me a while, so. Well, the moment it starts to stink, I want to know now. Mind if I talk to it once in a while? <laughs> Her. And of course, she's a great conversationalist. Never argues, never judges. Right. That's hilarious. Hey, Cap. Uh, you getting along with the crew? Well, yesterday, Ellie and I almost got to fighting. She turned to Mike Green when I cooked up a bit of rap for dinner. I told her she ought to toughen up. She almost punched me. I like her. Reminds me of Rebecca. She's got a kind of spirit to her. The kind true freedom hasn't beaten down yet. Shit. Look at me dredging up bygone days. Forget I said anything. I'm not pushy talk when you're ready. I will. Hey, Cap. Let's talk about this gorging job. Something ain't right here, Captain. We ought to tread carefully. All this cloak and dagger for a journal? I ain't buying it. You think there's something more to this? Yeah. The whole thing stinks of a cover-up. I'm used to folks leaving their messes behind for all the colony to see. Hell, look at Monarch. So imagine what they'd actually be trying to hide. Captain, it's going to be bad. Good. If it is, we can help Minnie bring it to light. Look, I'm all for bringing folks to justice under a reign of metal. All I'm saying is, be careful. Something feels different about this one. Okay. And now Felix. Oh, no, wait, Ellie. She's right here. I don't know where Felix went. Ellie. Something on your mind? Uh, let's talk about the Gorgon job. You know I've got no love for top rungers, but if Minnie's willing to pay, I say we take her money. You ever heard of Lucky Montoya? Sure. Like Ada said, he was a big name among freelancers. I met him at Lost Hope once. He was buying rounds oh, for already... everyone and telling a story about one of his jobs. Pretty sure half of it was made up. We already talked to her about that. Anything right, so else? Felix. What's on your mind? Whoops. Sure. Something on your mind? Alright. Felix. Where the hell is he? Sam never says anything. You in the bathroom, Felix? Ah! Oh, there he is. Good to see you, boss. You got a minute? I want to talk to you about this business on Corrigan. So we just sat around a table, talking about a severed arm. Of all the weird things that happened on this ship, that ranks somewhere in the middle. What do you think about this lucky Montoya guy? You ever watch The Masked Marketeer? Sounds familiar. Episode 5 of The Masked Marketeer. 
first appearance of a recurring villain. Big ol' galoot, built like one of those industrial-class garbage compressors. His name? Tiny. Let him continue. Every adventure serial's gotta have a supporting character with an ironical name. It's a rule of the Genry. <laughs> Mass Me Marketeer genre. had a massive bruiser named Tiny, and we got ourselves a real unfortunate hullhead named Lucky. Coincidence? I think not. Genre, Felix. It's pronounced genre. Genre, right. Thanks. I read that word in a poster once. Never actually used it in a conversation. Anyway, where were we? You seem pretty excited about this job. We're freelancers. We take any job we can get. But this one? The dying message of a stranger. A severed hand delivered in a crate. Let's just say it beats flying around the colony running errands. So, of course, I'm gonna be excited. I've gotta hand it to you, Felix. You've got heart. Hey, I get it. Gotta <laughs> hand it to me. Severed hand. <laughs> That's what oh, you were going sure. for, right? Was... That wasn't what you were going for. Yep, I can tell by the way you're glaring at me. Yeah, boss? So, he seems pretty excited about it. Maybe we'll take uh, Felix and Vicar. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. Yeah, sure, Ada. I like Ada, I'll be honest. All right, so let's go ahead. The overheat heavy weapon. And the coolant distributor. This one only does 791 for a heavy weapon. That's not very much. But it does do chill. I'm not sure what that is, but... What are this? Oh yeah, I need to break that down. There we go. Um, I wanted to try that one out. I think I'll put the flamethrower in there as well. Oh, live plus five. We probably could have done it with that. Uh, do these... Yeah, they weigh point five each. Hmm. That's not too bad, I guess. I forgot to sell all my junk. Before we do anything else, I want to see if there's... Welcome oh, back, okay. Captain. How I don't think I she has any more dialogue. I request you do Shut not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. Uh, I just wanted to see if there's going to be anything else at the manor if we take Felix, because he's the only one. Him and uh, Vicar, who really have a lot to say on the matter. I've noticed that, you know, that some things are better with different companions, but you really gotta kind of, um, feel out who it is. That stupid butler thing is still down here. Yep. This is Unfortunately, we already did the dialogue, so there might not be anything. We will see. Forgive the mess. I'm still unpacking and everything's covered in dust. Tell me about that note you left in your bedroom. Oh, okay, so we can talk to her about some other just stuff. Someone's been snooping around. Not that I mind. It reminds me why I hired you in the first place. For your keen eyes and scandalous disregard for privacy. When I left home, I wanted mother and father to know the conditions of my return. I would stroll through the entrance with my head held high, or not at all. I left this place with every intention of returning once the time was right. Did you enjoy Byzantium? When I arrived, I was the toast of the town. 
all fought for the honor of lighting my cigarettes. The attention was sublime. I opened a small firm to help young, impressionable heirs manage their family wealth. Business was good. For a while. What happened to your business? Gorgon happened. Gorgon. With mother's downfall, so too fell my influence in society. I sold the business at a loss. Then I hatched a plan to restore the family name. That plan, as you're now well aware, is still in motion. So the house was empty when you returned? Yes. That wasn't part of the plan. Fall of Gorgon accelerated my schedule. I thought I would find success in Byzantium. Instead, I must look for redemption back where I began. Here, in these vacant halls. That's all I want to know. Thanks. You reminded me of better times. I should be thanking you. This house has seen better days. Regrettable, I know. We used to have a staff to maintain the grounds. Not just auto mechanicals, either. Real people doing real work. Explain the fake fish in the fake pond. Father loved his salt tuna. He was an avid fisherman, you know. But that was long ago. When they moved here from Byzantium, Mother told me he was heartbroken to learn there was no sport. So she bought him a pond for his sad, lonely amusement. Do you visit the rock garden much? Not as much as I used to. Who has time to slow their thoughts and bask in tranquility? It's all that's really worth doing in this life. I prefer staring out the window of my drawing room, brooding on matters outside of my control. What's with the Moon Man statue in your foyer? Hideous, isn't it? I've been meaning to have that thing removed. Maybe jettisoned into the sun. Spacer's Choice agreed to double Mother's research budget if she subjected her family to product placement. I swear, those eyes follow me wherever I go. Couldn't you hire on a new staff? It's hard to find good help. And I'm not quick to trust anyone who'd work for me. Present company excluded. I can worry about upkeep once my family name is restored. Until then, this manor is a base of operations. That's all I needed to know for now. Very well. If there's anything else, you have my attention. Uh, I had questions about your family. The Ambrose family comes from old Earth money. We were pioneers, inventors, and chimerists. Always at the top of our field, never lagging behind. If there's anything else you'd like to know, speak on. Your mother left an unfinished goodbye recording in the master bedroom. A goodbye recording? I don't understand. She must have known she was in danger. Oh, but I think you're right. Mother left that phonograph because she knew something awful might happen to her. She knew Spacer's choice wanted her silence. Her death was no co coincidence. It was murder. Could she be trying to warn you? It's too early to reach any conclusions. I should continue my investigation. I mean... Murder. How naive I was to assume otherwise. I thought the corporation could sink no lower, yet here we are. Maybe I shouldn't have jumped we to conclusions. We have to find that journal, Captain. And when we do, Spacer's Choice will rue the day they crossed my family. I read your mother's terminal. Her logs were interesting. Ah, yes. I've scanned her old logs. But I'm afraid they haven't given up anything I didn't already know or suspect. If you have any questions, you can trust me to answer them. I gain nothing by leaving you in the dark. Who's Lucian? Your mother didn't seem to approve of him. Lucian was mother's point of contact at Spacer's Choice. I'd call him high-ranking, but I don't think his job had a rank in the traditional sense. He once tried to recruit me to work on Gorgon, but of course Mother wouldn't hear of it. I never forgave her for that. Why didn't Spacer's Choice overrule her? And risk losing one of the colony's greatest minds to Auntie Cleo? I think not. No. In their estimate, I'm certain Mother was worth ten of me. They did the math, and 
I came up short. What did they want you to do on Gorgon? A little bit of everything, I suppose. Manage personnel, keep an eye on budgets, see that goals and expectations were well-defined. Chemistry may be my passion, but Spacer's Choice recognized my knack for administration. I would have taken the job and perhaps even enjoyed it. Back to the topic at hand. Did anything else in Mother's Terminal glue your eyes to the screen? Something drove your father mad. Olivia put him into hibernation. I so wanted to avoid opening that wound. So no. here we are. Father was exposed to some of Gorgon's more caustic chemicals. I don't know how, but I suspect that Mother brought her work home. Where is he now? I don't know. It's possible that Mother carted him off to Gorgon for her studies. That, or she killed him and buried him under the floorboards. Or bricked him behind a wall. I wouldn't put anything past Olivia Ambrose. Right. You paint a very, very grim picture of your mother. Thank you. Right. There's no two ways about it. Mother was vicious. And that's saying something in Halcyon. Any chance that you were exposed to the same chemicals? By that point, I was already living at Byzantium, trying to get out from under my family's shadow. You're very kind to consider my well-being, but if I'd been exposed, we'd be having a very different conversation. Back to your mother's terminal. Yes? You never mentioned that you enjoy painting. Of all the intrigue and mysteries surrounding my household, that is what interests you. I do enjoy painting. I haven't indulged in some time, but it's a pleasant enough diversion. What would you call your style? Surreal? Expressionistic? I honestly don't think I've been at it long enough to have a style. Painting is something I enjoy on the side, not something I chase to perfection. We Ambrose ladies have a way of ruining the things we love by committing ourselves to them. What's your favorite painting? I've always been partial to truth emerging from the well to shame mankind by Jerome. That painting speaks to me. It shows how nothing stays hidden for long. Well, thanks for sharing. Your curiosity is charming, but do remember to focus on the job at hand. It's all about a terminal. I'll let you know if I find anything else. You do that. And thanks for your attention to detail. You came from a talented heritage. What interests you? If Mother and I shared anything, it was our love of chemistry. Chemistry is a desire to understand matter, the very foundation of our existence. What Ambrose could ignore such a tempting lure? It's all for now. Yes? About the job. Ask anything you like, Captain. It's nice to have a competent partner for a change. Is there anything you aren't telling me? I've told you everything I know. I trust you to investigate Gorgon and draw your own conclusions. If you can think of anything specific, all you have to do is ask. We'll come back to this if I think of anything else. Of course, my dear Captain. I look forward to it. Be seeing you, Minnie. Hey boss, what's our policy on getting to know our clients a little better? You think she'd appreciate some My company? Felix. Talk to her, Felix. You won't know unless you try. All right. <laughs> I can do this. Well, I'm glad I came back. Here goes. Miss Ambrose? Must get awful lonesome up here all by yourself. What do you do for fun? Because uh, if you're interested, I've got the full set of Terror on Monarch. The last thing I need in my life is more corporate propaganda masquerading as entertainment. <laughs> Whisper. Minnie. He's trying to flirt with you. Uh, I'd be willing to give Felix some time off if you wanted to watch it together. Well, let's let them talk. Hmm. I think that came off a bit harsher than I intended. You seem very nice and very pretty, but I'm not ready to invite anyone into this mansion long term or even short term. Hey, no problem. I figured it was worth a shot at least. Oh, that's, and I'm very glad I came back. We not only got a lot more information, Jesus, uh, that we could have got before I even left here the first time, 
But, uh... We have... No, you know, Felix got a lot of, uh... A lot more story and stuff. This is just... And this is interesting, too. What the shit? There's bits in the ground. Other hidden bits. Did I get this? Yeah. Well, after that, um, extra dialogue that we had with Minnie. I really, really like Minnie's character. She, uh, so far is one of the better characters, in my opinion, in the game. Oh, I missed this. Oh yeah, let's see if we can mod our gun real quick. Let us see. Wow, that's the only one we can modify? Oh, it already has three. Critical damage plus 25%, damage type corrosion, and post armor damage dealt plus 15%. Okay. Wait. Oh, these are all our companions. I think. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's that crazy ass thing. Well, let's take off this one. 703, just for that pistol. It's quite a bit. Um, Special Choice Exits. Resolve a serious thing, so should you. So the special effect is knockback. Let's see if we can modify it. So none for the barrel. Mag to zap. Damage type shock or plasma. Hmm. Let's go with shock. Ooh, we can put a barrel on there. Uh, weapon range plus 25%. Or weapon... Ranged weapon spread, negative 20%. Let's see. Damps it by a good bit. It gets to 0. 0.13 degrees. And this one's effective range and max range goes up by 14 meters and 112 meters. Hmm. Let's go with the extendo site. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. I wonder if, because you know Parvati is now in a relationship with, um, uh, the mechanic on the Groundbreaker, I can't remember her name. I wonder if Felix and Minnie. Is a proper serial adventure without a narrator? How about this? Our intrepid heroes stepped foot on Gorgon. Oh, whoops. Yeah, boss? Damn it. Damn it. I wanted to hear that. Okay, well, we're almost to level 31. So we have these. Oh, whoops. The electric fling. Um, we've got to retrieve a good amount of stuff for that. And love is the plan, and the plan, the plan is death. 
see where that is in the map. Oh, that's only right there. Oh, shoot. Well. Now, I know when we first left, oh, like, we went all the way over here. I don't know, I can't remember if we went over there or not. I know we, uh, because the first thing we were supposed to go to was right there. So, yeah, we... I don't remember if we've explored that or not. Oh, wait, how the hell do we get over there? Through this, I believe. That's interesting to me too, this little force field here. I wonder when and if we're going to be taking that down. Get in there, go all the way up there. We have to, right? Oh. They're back. Nice hit! Down! I gotta get used to this. Oh, crap. Man, I gotta get used to this pistol. So right there. How do we get up there? Okay, so this looks like something we can only do once we unlock this. We have to go up there, I believe. No, maybe not. Let's keep going. Oh, I never saw this. Interesting, this isn't stealing. Got 
guess there's nothing here. Oh yeah, there's just no, definitely no one here. I thought the uh, sound I was hearing was somebody like banging on something, but no, nah, it's just an ambient noise. Kill that. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah, I forgot how they did this. Kick him. Never anger a man of the cloth. I keep pressing RB by accident. Always wanted to go strolling through a ghost town. This place is steep. Enray weakness. No thanks. Eaped in desolation and despair. The natural habitat of marauders. Fast travel location, Gorgon Ruins. Economy flats discovered. Can we go in any of these places over here? Because it's not looking like it. Go you know, in this room. The bracelet, there's a note there. Letters. From Edgewater, two of three. Dear Cousin Dan, Adrena time really leaves you wanting more, doesn't it? We got through the first batch fast, but lo and behold, Reed gave us more. In recognition of our exemplary work, ethic, and unwavering brand loyalty. How about that? Still no letter from you. I've been feeling a tad queasy lately, but I'm not. I'm sure a little Adrena time is just what I need to shake it off. Write me back. Howls, how are the sunsets on Gorgon? Do you get sunsets? Sleep. Oh, no. Letters from Edgewater 3 of 3. Cousin Dan. Reed stopped giving out the stuff. Lo, law, damn it. If I can't get a dream time from him, that makes you my only source. Don't you fucking string me along. Can't work, can't sleep, can't even think straight. Give it over. Send me everything you got now. Please? Also, are they hiring? Oh, here's the first one. Letters from Edgewater 1 of 3. Dear Cousin Dan, Reed Thompson started doling out Adrena time to a select few of us, and guess who got his hands on the first batch? Isn't that the drug you're working on? I had my doses this morning and worked straight through lunch. The guy who cleaned Saltuna across from me is pulling his second shift, and now he's due for a two-bit raise. You should see what he can do with a scaling knife. Don't forget to write back. Maybe... Get me the Moon Man's autograph when you've got a minute to spare. So it would seem like, uh, Reed is even worse than he seemed to be in, um, Edgewater. Oh, I can't go in any of these rooms.
Oh wow. Engraved flask. The engraving reads, Jerome. Cheers to the beginning of forever. Love, Lenora. It smells of decent whiskey, cheap cologne, and old cigarettes. What we got the flask for? I mean, we really don't... Hello, Spretz. Invented Mark IV helmet. We have one of those. Toss ball. Let's go ahead. Oh, I thought this was readable. This is my second month on Adrena Time. It's like the color came back. Like I was tuned to the wrong band all this time, and now the static's gone. I'm finally clear headed, focused. There's so much I'm excited to do. I feel like me again. Side effects? I. Guess I've noticed people staring at me a lot more lately. Hard to talk to them sometimes. Feels like they don't get it. Maybe they just don't trust it. Or maybe they don't trust me. I'm trying to see who's... It's just Dear Cousin Dan. It doesn't say who these are from, though. Because if... But the flask was up there. I was thinking maybe this is Jerome. Ah, shit. It told us to come here though, why did it change? Oh, there must be something here. In this writing thing. Jerome's journal, okay. Day zero. Ship just left. Law bless for getting Le Lenora off this blasted rock. Etheridge called me a fool for giving her my ticket, but Etheridge is a dumbass. So what does he know? I do it again in a second. From now on, my only goal is survival until Spacer's Choice comes back for the rest of us. L, my heart, I will find my way home to you. Day one. Some of us sheltered in the mines last night, taking turns keeping watch. I don't care to imagine what happened to the others who aren't here. I can hear martyrs screaming in the hills. Day two. Use a little adrena time today. Not much, just enough to stay alert. Lucky I did, or we would have we wouldn't have heard those Mantasaurs coming in time to get the hell out of there. Going to search out a different cavern to shelter in tomorrow. Day three. Mine's not safe now. Not safe. Law damn it. Shouldn't have gone in there in the first place. I think we were exposed to something in the air, maybe. Day five. Most of us made it over to the apartments. We packed in here like Saltuna for now. But hopefully we can get a few more units barricaded and sealed up tight. Make them safe so we can spread out a little more. Day 6. I went by Elle's in my old apartment while hunting for supplies and stashed the flask. She gave me on the day we signed our marriage contract. Just in case something happens and she comes looking. Maybe she'll find it. Even if she doesn't find it, well, that's if some shiftless looter doesn't find it first. Day 7. Carlson's been short with everyone today. Carlson. Most days you could drop off flamed wrench on her foot, and the woman would apologize for being in the way. But for a minute there, I really thought she was going to stab Simon. Day 8. Ambushed by marauders in the night. Had to use Adrena time again to keep awake. Sorry, Elle, I didn't have much choice. Even with the Adrena time, I almost can't believe I outlasted them. Next time. Maybe. Best not to think about it next time. Day 15. Started to think we have were spaced out. Can't think like that. Gonna get back to you, Lenora. I swear. I miss you like breathing. Low on a time. Gonna go look for more. Day 22. L. 
Just gotta get back to L. Day 34. Etheridge stole my mock apple. That void forsaken sprat sack. Want to unzip his arms off and beat him with them. I could. Could do it. He sleeps. So weak, so stupid, stupid Etheridge. Day 42. Where in the system is Spacer's choice? Where are those blasted ships they promised they'd send for us? Did they forget we're here? Makes a man wonder. All my loyalty and for what? Only loyal to L now. Day 46. Maybe they abandoned us. It's on purpose, I know it. On purpose they left us here to die. They left us here to die. Day 49. If Etheridge steals what's mine again, I'll end him. Day L. Day question mark. How long does it take to send help? How long? How long? Come back and face us, you cowards. Spacers cowards. Day question mark plus L? I feel sick. BC trying to picture L's face, and I can't anymore. Forgive me, L. Day. Etheridge dead. Deserved it. Day L. So he kind of turned uh, crazy. That's sad. Commander. Now it had, you know, it didn't say who he was or anything like that. So I'm wondering if we already found him, and he's just labeled like, you know, a marauder now. Cigarette lighters. See, so that goes to the top of here. Oh, we've already been up here. Damn it. Thunder. See, you can't go in here, but there are things you can sell and buy. Oh, we can go in here, though. Need to sell my junk. You know, I'm very glad I sold all that Adrena time and uh, uh, that thing that makes you go s not this though. Whatever the hell it was, I sold it. Because now I'm picking up a lot more.
Okay, so... Oh, so here's the bridge. But there's... Codex. Okay, yeah, we've read and looked at all that. Um, I think it goes across there. Let's go to the other place first. Spacer's Choice wouldn't abandon such an expansive and expensive operation without good reason. Or in their case, a really bad one. I figured Spacer's Choice had a little outpost here. But no, they got the whole asteroid to themselves. How do you just buy a whole asteroid? Well, I mean, even now people can buy actual islands. So, I mean, I think you could think of an asteroid in a future like this, uh, kind of like that. Super big. Alright, so we have a little cave over there. Real quick, I wanna get rid of some of these. It's too bad that hunting rifle, you know, doesn't do much damage. It's a level 32, but only does 365. Because, I mean, they're really cool. Same with these Plasma Carbine Ultra. Fifty-four. What does mine do? This is like eighty, right? Eighty-four, yeah. You know what? I don't know what Felix has. So he has 12, 25, and then 5, 88. There you go. What about his gear? 46 and 46. There you go, buddy. Get rid of this flamethrower. So we can go right. Ah, this map is uh, not telling me much. Fast level. HIA facility rear exterior. Can't read those papers.
Birdie's research site discovered. Strangest place to set up a workstation. Okay, let's see. Exhilarating Adventures of Archibald. Ooh, okay. Um, of Archibald Excelsior, Ace Exterminator, and the Invasion of the Flesh Eating Sprats. Issue number three of four. A comic from the cult classic Ace Adventure Exterminator series, tragically canceled after its brief four issue run, scribbled and felt tip on the comic's spine is the word and. After pacifying the canid threat, rejuvenated hero Archibald Excelsior is deployed to the subterranean metropolis of Hephaestus to coil the rise of super villainous a cappella band, the Sprat Pack, when a new foe arrives to stop him. Buff Hardman, acquisitions agent of Super Dark Reclamation, will stop at nothing to acquire Hephaestus Mining's productive corporate enclave for his shadowy shipping concern. When Excelsior interferes with Hardman's plans to mind control the Sprat Pack, Hardman turns his dastardly mind control ray on Excelsior. Will our mustachioed hero free his mind from Hardman's powers? With his newly healed heart intact. I like when they have stuff like that in the game. Ooh, right into the papers. We got a thing we can read. Real quick, let's we'll just pick everything up. Virgil Sharp's data pad. Bertie. Law damn it. Bertie, what I tell you about pestering Maurice? He's not interested. If you scare him off the project, you're gone. I don't care if you're my kid's sister. We need his research. We don't need you. Got it? Good. I took a look at the pre preliminary schedule you sent over. You got all the tasks tracked, but the timing is off. For one thing, you have me finishing the metal casings fabrication after the package is supposed to be complete. Find me at the workstation in the mines near OCI when you get off shift. I'll go over the rest of my criticisms in person. By the marvelous mustache of Excelsior, Gil. P.S. How long do we have to keep saying that? It's ridiculous. This is nothing. That's weird. Okay, so... Can we go out this way? Sealed. I guess we'd unseal it from this side, maybe? Shot a dead body, buddy. Try something else, Captain. Out of my way. Got him, boss. Oh, get it off, get it off. Okay, I'm just saying I'm trying to get him to use special because I know he has it, but he wouldn't do it. Fast travel location discovered, HIA facility exterior. So yeah, we kind of just bypass these guys. Did a little bit better with the pistol that time. Let's see. Guess we can require HIA passkey to unlock, which is kind of weird because you just we went out the back or into the back, so I mean. It's 
not like there was anything super crazy in there. It's not in any of the bodies, so I don't know where we get that. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. That was weird. This sounded like you picked it up and then it didn't. say haven't found that key yet the axonia simple classic time honored the top hat the most venerable of all headwear now available from Jalicule science plus five whoops so we got a hat. Yeah, never found that key, but I mean, we didn't need it since we got in there anyway from the back, and the back wasn't locked or anything like that. I just kind of walked in there. Employee, employer rights under the Biased Labor Standards Act. Wage determined by merit of your work. Overtime may result in higher pay if the quality of said work is considered exemplary. Your employer has the right to dock your pay should you damage any facilities or equipment. It is your responsibility, not your employers, to avoid workplace hazards. Housing and Colony Department of Labor. And here we are outside. What the hell is that? Oh, that's gonna take off the um, force fields, I think. Great, pushing up. No, oh, just okay. Just open this so we can get out this way, I guess. But that's weird. No, um. No. Key. That's so odd. Why is this even here? I don't understand that. I really don't. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead and end this one here. I've been recording for way longer than I meant to. I didn't mean for it to be like a huge video or anything like that, but oh well. When we come back, we'll go ahead and talk to Lenore. You know, let her know about her husband. Um, I don't know if we want to really tell her that he went crazy, but we'll see what we do. Maybe I shouldn't have added this scope onto the pistol. I don't know. But, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Have a great day, and I'll see ya. Bye.